Hey everybody, what's up? I'm out here in the woods of Millis, Massachusetts today and, oh no, what was that? The sound of a bell in the woods of Millis, Massachusetts? I swear I've read about this. Of course, in an 85 year old guide to the state of Massachusetts. The section on Millis details a certain place, an evil place, where the Puritans heard the ringing of phantom bells thought to summon witches and demons from the other side. And hey, you know what? I just remembered a 1946 book on New England folk tales called Jonathan Draws the Long Bow mentions this too. A large pit with dark stagnant water at the bottom where conniving hobgoblins stalk around, ringing ghostly bells at any passerbys. And of course, a place this vile, this demonic, this horrible has to have a name to reflect just how terrifying it really is. A name so unholy that it strikes fear deep into the soul of any who hear it. In fact, those of you with weak constitutions might want to cover your ears because the name of this devilish swamp is not for the faint of heart. This name will shake your understanding of reality. It will tear your life apart. They call this place the Dingle Hole. Seriously, that is the name. I did not make that up. You know how like today the onomatopoeia word we use for like the sound of a bell is jingle? Like jingle bells and all that? Well, back in the day they used dingle a whole lot more often, which is where the phrase dingle hole comes from. Pretty funny, right? Anyway, though. Dingle hole. 1913, a handbook of Medway history. A pool of dark, stagnant water, believed to be a bottomless pit. Dingle hole. 1966, the legend of Grizzly Adam, partially filled with stagnant water. Strange lights were to be seen at night, while uncanny and unearthly sounds were uttered. Dingle hole. 1886. The history of Medway, Massachusetts. This one even has a picture of the place. In the olden times, it was supposed to be the rendezvous of witches and of the evil one, the place where Satan met with his disciples, who there pledged themselves to his service. Dingle Ho! Way back in 1826, an article in the Boston-based newspaper, The New England Galaxy, on a dark, moonless night. When the spirit's bell was always most sonorous, strange lights and globes of fire were frequently seen playing about Dingle Hole. Oh, oh man, I've been running for so long now, but the dingling, it just keeps getting louder. I must be getting closer and closer to the Dingle Hole. It could be anywhere around here now. Oh man, and you know what's even worse? is the story gets a whole lot darker than just hobgoblins ringing bells. Many old folk tales on the Dingle Hole mention a headless man stalking the shores of the swamp. On moonlit nights, a headless man keeping vigil petrified by the apparition of a man without a head. A headless man was often seen, accompanied by fireballs and witches. The operation of a man without a head. Oh, and by the way, I should probably mention that the story of the Dingle Hole goes beyond just like general spooky vibes. Like there's lots of like specific stories related to the Dingle Hole that I like a lot. Like here's a couple of my favorites. The first one is that a hunter was walking through the dingle hole, right? And he comes across a raccoon and he's like, I want to shoot that. So he levels his gun and he fires and the raccoon doesn't take the bullet. And he fires again and again and again and again. And for some reason he just can't hit that, hit that raccoon, right? So he goes over to a witch hazel tree, plucks a branch, carves it into the shape of a bullet, sticks it in his gun, fires and strikes that raccoon dead. And the other one is even better. Basically this dude on like a horse and buggy, his horse, key, his horse team got tired, right? So he hops off the buggy, whips his horses, they don't do anything. So he's like, hmm, there must be witches in the wheels of the cart. So he goes to town whipping the wheels on the cart and somehow that's evidence that the wheels had been bewitched by the dingle hole, right? Don't, imagine you're like call AAA one day and you're like, 
hey, yeah, my car won't start. And the guy pulls up in his pickup truck, opens the door, hops out on the ground, goes, hmm, I'll take care of this one. And then he whips his belt off and just starts going to town on your car wheels. Anyway, though, looks like we're getting close to the dingle hole here. So back to being scared. Dingle hole. Witches in the shape of raccoons and weasels infest these lands. Dingle hole. This spot is of gloomy, weird, and fearsome aspect. Oh man, I'm really starting to get freaked out now. I'm in, I'm in some hot water here. Wait a minute. There it is. That's gotta be it. That's it for sure. The dingle hole. Wait, that's it? Well, I guess I do remember reading that development around the dingle hole has really whittled the swamp down to just a fraction of its original size. Almost the entirety of the original swamp has been filled in to make room for all the roads and houses that crowd around it nowadays. Pretty weird to think about, huh? This place once commanded the respect and fear of its local population, and now it's just what? A big puddle on the side of the road with a goofy name, right? 300 years ago, people were terrified to walk by these waters. And now I doubt that most of the people who drive by this little pond even notice the thing, let alone know the weight it used to carry. So, you know, I gotta ask, if this place really does have some kind of paranormal energy, if it's really got a sort of spiritual force to it, if demons and witches really curse those who draw near it, at what point does it lose that power? Like, how small does it have to get? I mean, there's not really anywhere for all those headless men and witch raccoons to hide anymore, is there? Can there still be some magic to this place, even after how severely it's been wounded? To be honest, I don't think I can really answer those questions. I'm not really a big supernatural guy myself. What draws me to this place is the power of the folklore that surrounds it. Through sheer reputation, this site stood for centuries as one of the most notorious spots in New England. Our little dingle hole here has a name, a history, basically a whole mythology built around it. And without that, wouldn't it pretty much just be indistinguishable from the thousands of other dirty little ponds next to a road that you can probably find all across the country. You know what I mean? There's like a certain kind of energy to this place that isn't necessarily born of any kind of like witch or demon, just people and the stories we tell each other, right? So, you know, I gotta ask, let's go back to our original question. How long will the magic of the dingle hole last? How long can its power subsist? How long will the legend remain? You know, when I think about it, I can really only come up with one answer. And that's as long as we want it to.